Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 9th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, how do you hide an Excel spreadsheet better? There is a visible, there is a hidden property. Turns out there's also a very hidden property within Excel that does hide Excel spreadsheet and doesn't allow you to easily unhide them again within Excel itself. So if you run into this, uh, well, uh, we have a quick diary about this by Didier from The Weekend, and he suggests uh, use a tool like Show Sheets, uh, for example, that will expose these, or just uh, use a script to change the visible property programmatically and just uh, change it to visible again. Of course, this can also be accomplished with your favorite hex editor, if you're familiar enough with the file format to find the right byte to flip. And we got an update for Wireshark, Wireshark version 3.2.2. And the reason this version of Wireshark is worth a mention here is that if you're running Windows and you installed Wireshark 3.2.1, well, the automatic update is broken. So you need to manually apply 3.2.2. Otherwise, you'll never get any other updates again. And the PPP or point-to-point -point protocol is uh, one of those protocols that you think we should know how to get uh, right these days. It's uh, very old, goes back to dial-up times, but it's still used commonly sort of for some VPN applications and the like. Sadly, recently the PPP, the point-to-point the -point protocol daemon for Linux had a uh, Buffer overflow vulnerability in the, in the implementation of the extendable authentication protocol or EEP. Now, exploiting this flaw, an attacker could send an EEP packet to a vulnerable server and achieve full remote code execution without any kind of authentication. So this is certainly quite a critical flaw, something that you should apply quickly, affecting the PPP daemon 242 through 248. And NordVPN apparently fixed a vulnerability in its billing platform that would allow anybody to retrieve payment information for any user without any authentication. And as a bonus, you'll also get this user's email address back, which uh, may be quite of a problem because people use services like NordVPN in particular because they are concerned about privacy. The flaw was sort of one of those classic API flaws where the API itself accepts an ID and a user ID parameter, but never actually verifies if the user requesting this data is actually authenticated as the particular user whose data is being requested here. Uh, this was uh, discovered by a researcher and posted to HackerOne, the bug bounty platform that NordVPN is using. And NordVPN now has patched this particular flaw. NordVPN stated that uh, the exposure was somewhat limited uh, because there was a rate limit in place. Now, I'm not sure how fast this rate limit was. Also, that uh, no browsing information or other information that you typically try to keep private if you're using a VPN was leaked through this particular API. And then yet another story telling us that Android users have a hard time updating their devices. In particular, since many of these devices tend to be no longer supported a couple of years after the device was originally released. So according to this latest study, about 40% of Android users are no longer receiving security updates. Uh, this issue, and this is now a little bit beyond uh, the particular study here, I think is actually worse than that uh, because all of these studies always focus on mobile phones. Android goes way beyond uh, mobile phones. You have a lot of TV sticks and devices like this that are running Android. And I find in particular uh, problems like, for example, exposed debug ports and the like usually don't affect phones so much, but often do affect these uh, TV sticks and other Android-based devices because they're often based on e 
even older releases of Android more difficult to patch and well also sometimes more vulnerably configured than your standard mobile phone. So if anybody wants to do or has any research about this, uh, let me know, uh, because it would be interesting to see how much of Android is actually not installed on phones, but on various sort of IoT style devices. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.